Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, the owners of the Nashville and Franklin, Tennessee School of Rock, Kelly and Angie McCrate. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, everyone? Rich Redman here. We This is another episode of the Rich Redman Show, and I am so excited about having my guests here, Kelly and Angie McCray. Yes, let's hear it for them. Okay. Come on, Jim, give them some of the... Where's the, where's the applause? It's right. It's coming up. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Yes. I'm so glad you did that and not the toilet sound. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long time coming, guys. I'm so yes. excited that you're here. We're excited. Yep. Yeah. So you guys have owned the School of Rock in Nashville and Franklin for how long? Eight years. And it's been awesome. And I, and I feel like I've been involved with you guys for maybe six years. Yeah. At least. Yeah. At least. Maybe right after you guys got it. Yeah. I remember doing a clinic over there yeah. because... I think um, when I was playing some to some tracks at a clinic over there, it was, I was playing the song, Are You Gonna Kiss Me or Not, from mm -hmm. Thompson Square, which came out in 2011, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Now, guys, help me say hi to my co-producer, my co-host, Jim McCarthy. Hi, hi Jim. Hi, Jim. Yes. yes. JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. How are you, bud? How was your, well. What day is it? Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> We just came from Qdoba, had a good lunch. We did have a good lunch. It kind of ran a little late, but it was good. And it was good. He decided to go with the burrito, nice. and I really wanted it, but I said no to the flour. I but did. Look it. at you and look at I'm me. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're, you're crazy. So, I look like a burrito, and you don't. <laughs> you stopped. So, oh, wow. this is what happened today, guys. Um, not to, to have a pity party, but wow. When that alarm went off at 3.30 a.m. in Kansas City, Missouri this morning, and then I had to go to St. Louis, change planes, get on another flight, and it was freezing when I landed here. So I mean, cold. oh my God, my, I got open wounds here on my hands, man. Um, you've been talking about that. I need some since, lotion. Since I've run into you today. You're yeah. This, you're, you're little cuts on, on your hands. I know. You aren't, know. aren't your hands in shirt? Um. They should be. Are they, they should, insured? No, I have disability insurance, which is I do recommend for all musicians. But didn't you look into insuring your hands? I did. Lloyd's of London. It was um, something like twelve hundred dollars a month to insure your hands. Wow. And and so I ended up just getting basic disability insurance with a sister company that is approved by Lloyd's of London. Was that through our uh, mutual friend, Mike Mercurio? Mike Mercurio. Yeah. Okay. He's the guy that kind of he kind of eviscerated my finances and got me on a good track here to maybe have some money when I'm 70 years old and maybe not playing the drums anymore. But most likely, I'm going to be die like this. One, two, three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to probably die like that. That's the, that's the way to die. He's going to walk around with the oven mitts like Costanza did. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually kind of what we were talking about before about you know you only live once kind of mentality. Yeah. You know, we were walking out of the restaurant and uh, I was telling you about you know. Possibly a stupid purchase decision that I'm considering making. Oh, Jim was the guy that encouraged me to to um, get into a an fiscally irresponsible but super <laughs> super fun sports car. Aren't that you I, glad you did it? Though? I'm so glad I did it and experienced it. Now he, you're thinking about taking the equity from one of your cars and rolling it over into an overly priced car. Possibly. Are you, are you going to yeah. do it? It accomplishes a lot of things. Yeah. You know, when you pull up to the campground, people are going to wonder who you are. That's right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice. Who in the world would pull a camper with that thing? That, yeah. That's what they're going to wonder. Nice. So what is that, what is happening? There, you said there's a big day happening at School of Rock, uh, Nashville or Franklin today? Nashville. Okay. We have Pride's Pride Day mm -hmm. at the Nashville School of Rock. And Nash and the energy team will be there from four to six. Mm. And so we're encouraging all of the kids and parents and staff to wear their favorite Pred's gear and come out and say hi to Nash and just celebrate the Preds. I love this. Yeah. Because we love the Preds. Yeah, we got to support. I was in I was actually in the Predators house band with the guys in Al Dean's band. We used to in 2001, 2002, we were in the house band and you guys do that gig now, right? Up in the Yep. The, we right? Do. Yeah, I, the Preds 
relationship has just blossomed over time. Yeah. It's been one of those things where they, I think they were a little skeptical when they, they brought us like into play. Student musicians? Student huh? musicians. Yeah. And then I always remember the first time we got to play, and I, I think we did this, uh, we did Whipping Bird, right? Which is a combination of uh, Whipping Post, and we end it with the solo, the outro for uh, Free Bird. That's creative. Yes. And yeah. it just blew, I mean, it blew it away. And yeah. ever since then, we've we become a sponsor of Crazy Kyle, the, yeah. the organ player. And so we play four or five times a year over there. So it's just been a, it's been a great relationship. And it, uh, kind of that journey, as a, as a band or, yeah. or a house band, yes. really with the Preds of, you know, starting small and improving yourself, and it's it's been a great you know relationship with us. That is so, awesome. I so. remember I was like, uh, it was a different time uh, for us, and we were like. Oh, a hundred bucks and a hot meal and a chance to be on ESPN? Sign me up! Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. It was Stereo. a different time. It was yes. great. Um, you know, the coolest thing about that gig is not only getting to play in front of a bunch of people, but you've done it, but you know, you only have so many, so many, so much time to play right. and it, it's, it's never the same amount of time. You have to end, say, with four minutes left to go and so it's teaching those kids how to end a song halfway through, three quarters of a, right. of a way. Find the landing spot. Exactly. And, and <laughs> And, you know, that's we get more impressed with the kids when they kind of nail that. Who calls record. those shots? Is there like a band leader? The drummer, usually. The it's drummer. usually the drummer. Yeah. yeah. So you know Lily. Lily. So she's great at that. Yeah. She can kind of mm-hmm. pull them together and go, okay, we've got 20 seconds, and we're in the middle of the chorus. Yep. So here we go. We've got a... She knows right. probably by on measure nine after an eight-bar yeah. phrase, we got to stop this. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So we get yes. we get super excited when they just nail that. So she is so cool. And are we going to get to jam together again this year at your big event that's coming up? I'm not sure. It might be a different drummer this year. Oh, we haven't but, decided. Yeah, um, for sure we're going to jam. Tell us about your event that's coming up yep. at the Ryman. That's I'm seeing in the Nashville scene. I'm seeing it everywhere. Yes, yes, we're so excited about it yeah. because it's uh, the Ryman's promoting it on their website. Like you said, the Nashville scene. Uh, we're having a rocking at the Ryman mm-hmm. on January fifth. And you're going to be the MC I, I host with the most glad to do again it. this year. It's going to benefit Learning Matters. And that is um, an organization that a lot of our students benefit from. So we're really excited to be able to raise some money for them. But all of our performance group kids will have the opportunity to take the Ryman stage and perform at least once. I love it. And um, we're going to have our house band play mm-hmm. again. You got to jam. That a was little fun. last I know. year. And um, we might even have, you know, some other people play that might be a little bit of a surprise to people. Yeah. So. I need to help you get some of the celebrities in there. Yes. I, I got to. Because that's a big thrill for, for us and I think them too. They, I got to stir the that. pot. Yeah. Last year we had uh, we had Lionel Richie's guitar player. Yes. We had Billy Sheehan on bass. Um, you had the keyboard player from Moon Taxi. Mm-hmm. It was just a great group of guys. Yeah. yeah. We had a lot of fun. Uh, here's Jim's bad idea of the show. Ready? Oh, no. There's have, always one. I'm going to suggest an act. You ready? Drum roll. Ready. Jugglers. Jugglers. <laughs> I know a great juggling act. Dude, where where are they? Playing by air. They played at <laughs> Madison Square Garden. They played at the White House. They're really good. Do you think they'll come down to the Ryman and do it? I'm sure they would. Are they here in Nashville? Yeah. Oh, just kind of like in between and sets? They're really good. I don't know. Okay, we'll check I'm into it. i Okay. <laughs> so where can people get tickets for this event on January 5th? Uh, the Ryman. The, the Ryman, Ryman website. Ryman website. website. Yep. Great. Yes. I love that. Now, how did you guys decide to get in? Now, the School of Rock, there's there's 250 locations. I I think they you guys just landed the 250 of this Rio, in Rio. Rio de Janeiro yep. is the 250th yes. location. I yes. think there's 80,000 students that are coming through this program. They're allowed to be in the program from three to 18. You have your little wings, your rookies, you got your rock 101, you got your performance. You even have a, a program for adults. Oh, yeah. oh yes. So this is, I don't know how you keep it all straight. Yeah. How many staff members you guys have at each location there? Well, we have general managers at each location and music directors at each location, as well as our studio coordinators. So that's kind of our management team, mm-hmm. along with Kelly and myself. So we're kind of like doing the day-to-day thing, but it's anywhere from 10 to 15, sometimes 20 instructors, depending on their schedules, because they don't always work every day. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have some that work every day and yeah. some that work one day a week. Are you guys so. always looking for um, fresh teacher talent? Yeah, because, you know, these guys that we're employing, they're most of them are gigging musicians. Right. And so they, we understand if they get a great opportunity to, to go right. on tour, then we've got to have some backups, right? Because yeah, we, yeah. we encourage that. So. I get an email or a 
tweet or t- a DM every day. Rich, I'm moving to Nashville. Any suggestions how I can pay the bills until I get things <laughs> off the ground? And so if I want to send them in your direction, they should they stop by the location, send you an email? Um, it, the easiest way for them to get to us with their um, job aspirations yes, would yes. be uh, for them to send their resumes to us at either Nashville at school com or Franklin at school Nashville at school or Franklin at school depending on which location they might want to work right. at. Right. Okay. Right. Cool. Now, how did you guys get into this? What is your musical backgrounds? I mean, are you appreciators of music or did you play an ax? What was your ax? So, um, I, I grew up playing a little guitar, but never, never really uh, f- for money or, or in a band or anything. Angie's got the real talent, uh, beautiful singing voice, and uh, but we've always just loved music. And I think it was uh, we were both in the corporate world, and Angie was in pharmaceutical research, and huh. you know about ten years ago, just said, "I think I'm done with this. You know, what could we do?" And I just happened to come across the School of Rock, and at that time, it had really just started franchising. I think there were mm-hmm. thirty or forty schools. We we looked into it, and I remember the first time we we toured a school. Angie's like, "This is it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life." And I'm like, "Hold, slow down, slow, <laughs> hold on, slow, slow the roll." <laughs> I think my words were, "If you don't let me do this, I will never speak to you." Yeah, for that, that, that was that was the, <laughs> happy wife, yes, happy life, exactly. But we spent a year really kind of looking at it and touring some other schools, and then pulled the trigger. And that's been our life really almost for the last 10 years. So yes. I don't know how you guys do it. It's busy, busy people. Yeah. Very busy. And your children are a byproduct of the school. Yes, they Sean are. Sean and Emily. And yes. they were in the all, they were, they were all stars. Yes. Right. Yes. Now the all star band is the best of the best and they actually get out to do tours, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. They will um, have usually, I think anywhere from six to eight all star teams. And they've started kind of staggering their tours and they start, anywhere from mid-June and go through the beginning of August. And so basically, um, the All-Stars are out for seven days, usually seven or eight days, and they'll rehearse at a School of Rock location for three days Mm -hmm. before they hit the road. And so these kids have never played with each other before, and they come in and they spend three days together all day long rehearsing, and then they hit the road for seven days. They have a gig every day. They get hotels and per diems yes. and all that rock and roll stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And they have and a dressing room rider and all that. I doubt that. But <laughs> Green M&M's. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, a lot of what School of Rock is, is teaching them what it's really like. Yeah. And um, some life skills. You know. Yeah. Sometimes the menus aren't that great. No. And sometimes the buses aren't that great. Right. And sometimes you're not eating until 11 o'clock at night or yeah. something like that. So, I mean, obviously they're kids and we take care of them like they need to be taken care of, but yeah. they get, it's the real deal. Like, you know, our own kids played at some pretty questionable venues when they yeah. were on All Stars. <laughs> Maybe tours. only playing for 20 or 30 people sometimes, yeah. but that's just, and then sometimes it's two or 300 yeah. or. Like yeah, the puppet so. show with Spinal Tap. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> you know, we tell all of the kids that are in our performance programs or in the house band, you know, you need to play for two people like you'd play for 200,000. Like, it doesn't mm. matter. And that's how you get to play for 200,000. Exactly. Level. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, they whine about it for a while, but then they get used to it and they're like, you know what? You're right. So. Because you never know who's in an audience. You never know. Yeah. There could be that tastemaker in the audience. Yeah. I, I was that guy in a cover band in Connecticut. That you Connecticut know, White Bread? Not you Connecticut White Bread. <laughs> we were with, uh, it was a band called Them Bones, and we were the, uh, we played everything in the mid-90s that was, um, you know, hot at the time, which, you know, style-wise was all over the map, because I think the record business at that point, the record business, the music industry was trying to find anything that would stick to the wall. Um so you had to be really diverse, but every time Enter Sandman came up to play, it was like just, you know, stick a drill in my head because <laughs> it, I was just, but I didn't play it. I didn't have that came, that I wish I played it with the same attitude that I have now. So was the band named right, after right, the right. Alice in Chains song? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All the, the guy who was in charge of it named his bands after Alice in Chains songs. Yeah. It was awesome. weird. Uh, there was a- uh, Man in the Box. Junkhead. <laughs> Junk, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you kind of bring up a really good point because I, I actually was talking about this the other day that, you know, there there are kids that you can tell there's some songs that they're cast on specifically in house bands sometimes and, and they're just not big fans of that particular song or right. band. And you can tell. And it's like, don't 
do that. Yeah. You know, and I said, go watch the Eagles documentary. Go watch these documentaries where these bands will say, I'm going to just lose it if I have to play that song one more time. But that's what the fans want. So that's why we do it. Right. And I always have to remind them, like, this isn't about being in a band is not about you. Yeah. It's about working together the as a team. Yeah. And also playing to your audience and playing what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like with Run to the Hills, everybody loves that epic drum. I mean, come on. Right. Like, if you go in there and you just do whatever you think should be in there, right. nobody's going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to respect it. You got to respect the artist. respect the artist. Sure. And, you know, be true to the artist. Now, if you're doing like your own mashup or cover or whatever, cool, do it. But like if you're playing these band's songs, do it the way they did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the kids, even, they're learning musical instruments. So at the end of the day, they're going to come out as a proficient drummer or bass player, guitar player, keyboard player, or a singer. But really, you're teaching life skills like uh, time management, how to get along in a group, yes. um, teamwork, responsibility. And then I'm sure the byproduct is in, is increased self-esteem because I know that, yes. that you have said that you've had um, children come through um with specific issues or, you know, social anxiety mm -hmm. and, and then a year later, two years later, completely different situation as a result of being in the program. Do you, yes. do you have anything, uh, specific stories that come to mind or, or, or. I have a lot of specific yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, stories. We, we want to hear specifics. How about either one of you guys, you know? You can. Yeah, take, uh, we had a, a, a drummer named Reed. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Reed uh, was in, came in the house band but he always just kind of looked down when he would talk to you and never would look you in the eye and I just over the three or four years that he was in the house band just completely transformed and you know just yeah, as he becomes a, a young adult yeah. uh, just like, like you said the confidence and then he's just on the drums and he's smiling and just those are the ones that that Angie and I that's why we got into this business yeah. when you see when you see those kind of situations happen you know yeah and he he actually I think has been one of the most beloved students by staff other students parents that we've had i mean we certainly have a lot of students that stand out whether it be from their talent or just their personality and i mean yeah, not, he's not the not the most the best room we've ever had but just it was right. kind of like norm whenever when he walks in everybody right. goes read oh he was definitely <laughs> yes yes i would I, that's exactly i mean that's what we want in life exactly right. when you enter a room yeah. for people to be right. happy that you walk yeah, yeah. in they're just so glad mm -hmm. he was there and yeah. he'll he'll pop at, up at shows every now and then just unannounced because he saw there was a show and oh see he's graduated he, yes yeah. he graduated yeah. the same year um our son did so yeah. it's been four years and He's still in town, and he comes. He'll drop in on a rehearsal, That's and still playing music still, and his own bands, and you know yes. he's still doing his thing. So yeah. good for him. And I, we have a lot of the a lot of kids that have graduated from our schools that come back and visit, or we see them at when we go see some Belmont bands play. Yeah. We'll see them out in the audience, or I even have some of my, our former students working yeah. for us. Um, and you know we love to go out and support them when they're playing as well. So that's got to um, make you feel good. Oh, it does. Yeah. I love it. Wow. I love it. And now, what, what was your quote about uh, your philosophy on the School of Rock? You don't play shows to teach music. You you don't teach music to play we, shows. You play... We don't well. teach music to put on <laughs> shows. We put on shows to teach yes. music. It's yes. It's such a it's such a yes. twist on it. Yes. And then, I, I was talking to this gentleman in Kansas City. That's a good one. <laughs> That's worthy of applause. Um, he said that there's now, you guys have maybe partnered with Hal Leonard. Is that true? Where there's an app? where you can get material yes. and curriculum now. Yes. That's really great because I, I felt like um, that was one thing about School of Rock where I was like, well, what's the curriculum? And it's mm -hmm. not unified across the 250 locations. Right. You know, it's like up to each franchisee to come mm -hmm. up with, and their teachers to come up with a curriculum. But now there's an app, right? Yes. Well, we have we had a curriculum in the sense that, yeah. that there's a School of Rock way right. to teach things. Philosophy. But as you know, as an educator, everyone learns differently. So you can either hear about it, see it, or do it. So, um, you know, our, our instructors, they all have their own ways of reaching their students, and every student's different, so they have to figure that out. But as far as, like, a standard curriculum in the sense of these are, the, these are our core shows that we do, 
um, and this is what it teaches. We've really um, been able to pull that together and develop what they call the method engine. And huh. that really drives um, the performance shows in, in the Rock 101 programs and the Rookies programs because you can search by proficiency level, by band, by song, by, um, you know, say I want – I want to show who I can have beginner all the way to advanced drummers in because you have, we always have a surplus of drummers. Everyone wants to play drums, Rich. <laughs> I know. It's like when, when, when you're in the school band in the fifth grade and you have to get to pick instruments mm -hmm. and everybody wants to play the drums. Because it's loud. <laughs> <laughs> but that, so that kind of ties in with the method books that we um, recently had published and those are with Hal Leonard, Hal Leonard has printed them out and all, every school assigned their students to a certain level. So there are five levels of method books for the students. And then that therein ties into the new app that we have. Nice. And the app is available to all School of Rock students, um, only to School of Rock students. I so. saw a little bit of it and it looked powerful. Like I, I, yes. I, you can type in a, a song name and there's like, you can duck out each of the instruments and you mm -hmm. can play along with it. Yep. And then, and then you could see the, the manuscript, like the music, like mm -hmm. scroll by in real time. I'm like, wow. And I, it cannot, it'll also grade you too. If you record yourself while you're playing it, you could record yourself into the app, like the well, it, microphone on the iPhone. You've probably done it. Have you done it? Yeah, I hadn't. Kelly I, with the guitar? Wow. No. But it, it will grade you like 30%, yeah. 40%, whatever. Wow. So it is kind of funny because like a few of our instructors did it. It's kind of like <laughs> gamifying the, the, the music. Yeah. It's, yes. oh man, these app designers, they, it blows me away. There's some mm -hmm. really smart guy with his glasses down to the end of his nose, like in a dark room, just huddled over with a poor posture on a laptop, just like, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. He's just like eating Twizzlers and guzzling a triple espressos. Mm -hmm. it, crazy. Well, and our instructors can also assign homework to yeah. the kids as well. So, yeah. and send notes to the parents. Now, some of the uh, like are some of the instructors tougher, like tougher oh, yeah. on the kids. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. So they have free reign to kind of have your own the kind of teaching style. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's always good to take from different instructors because you get different perspectives. What's the retention like rate on the kids? So, say they come in as a as a little wing <laughs> at age three. Are most of the kids staying in for 15 years? What is that like? Or do they drop in, drop out? Well, I think we tend to see the biggest turnover when they get their driver's license. <laughs> 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 yes. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 and a lot of times if they've played covers that long, they think, oh, we're just, we want to be an original band gotcha. when I'm 15 or 16. Oh, and good. then they find out they, they can't get into the exit in on their own yep. or 12th mm -hmm. and Porter. And sometimes they'll come back and go, you know what? I'll, I'll do that Pink Floyd show or that Led Zeppelin show. And I'll work my, you know, we want them to be, we want to encourage them to do their own sure. thing. Um, but that's typically when they, they, they become teenagers and they think they, they've got it figured out. That's typical. Yeah. yeah. Jim's got a teenager now. I know. <laughs> yeah, the, But is the thing with the driver's license still a thing? Like the, it kind of dropped off the interest, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we actually we're saying even with our our kids, they they weren't. I remember when I turned fifteen, I right. was like, man, let me, give me a car, come on. I'm, Didn't you want a driver's yeah, license? But now it's oh, it's yeah. not quite as. I yeah. think here in Nashville, maybe just they wait a little longer. Yeah, so. they don't I think really care. I know at least with the kids at our schools, there's a lot of fear mm -hmm. involved with it. I you mean, blame them? Nashville traffic is insane. Oh, oh really? really? <laughs> fear <laughs> of driving? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And and then there's the parents' fear because, like, we have a lot of kids that their parents won't let them drive into Nashville, and they they may be 18 years old, <laughs> and they still won't let them drive into Nashville. Wow. But I saw somebody advertising on one of the Spring Hill pages looking for an Uber this weekend for their 21 and 20 year old oh, kids yeah. to go to a concert. They're, they just don't want to drive into Nashville. They're yeah. too afraid. Well, that's kind of smart, though, honestly. Well, yeah. I was driving into New York City when uh, I was 19, yeah. 19 hey, when, years yeah, old. Yeah, when I was 15, I had driving to do because I had making out to do. Well, parking is <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it costs an arm and a leg to park, too. No, so, right. I mean, you know, and, you know, I, I think most of it is fear, at least for the students that we've had, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not ready. Really. But mom and dad are like, yeah. Come on, <laughs> you need to be ready. <laughs> so I like living a half a mile from downtown because like tonight I got to play a show at the Cambria Hotel mm -hmm. and um, 
I am Ubering. Yeah, you know, that makes sense yeah. for you. It's a lot easier than trying to park. Were your kids like, you know, on, they wanted to get their driver's license when they were of age? I, yeah. I mean, they were like already trying to schedule their, uh, for their learner's permit when they, wow. <laughs> they were like, I want to go on my birthday <laughs> yep. and they wanted to schedule it. And they both, did they have you drive to Columbia? One of them did. Lawrence, Columbia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's so crowded at the Franklin yeah. <laughs> location. You know, you know what I'm dreading this year? It's the year where I have to renew my driver's license, July of 2020. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go to the DMV, guys. That is horrific. But I think you can pre-schedule. You can. Yeah. You can. Which is easy. I got to do that. Yes. Uh, That's not a big deal. Did you guys ever meet the guy um, that kind of started this all? Paul Green in Philly. He was the guy in 96 that had the initial. I've never. We've heard tons and tons and tons of stories, but I haven't met him. So. I have not met him. Yeah. I am Facebook friends with him. You are? Yes. And so he's, he he sold the idea after a while, I believe. Yes. And then and then he started his own school after the legal thing dried up, I think. And then mm-hmm. he has mm-hmm. his own school of music now. Right. Yes. He went to, after he sold to School of Rock, he, he moved to Woodstock, New York. Mm-hmm. And he kind of created like an artist's retreat, yeah. I guess you would say. The Paul Green School of Rock Music? Is that, that's, that's what, what that's what wiki has that's what um Is school that, of rock was before gotcha. school right. of rock but he started the whole school of rock Man. thing um so his artist residence type thing he bought a school like an old school and like artists could go there to record and whatever and they could live there and things like that if i remember correctly and so um i think he's going to law school now and he has started back up with the Paul Green School of Rock Music. I'm not sure if that's what it's called or not, but there are several owners that were around when it was Paul Green School of Rock Music. And actually our first music director for our Franklin School worked for him. So yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of history there. Did, um, you know, when the movie came out with Jack Black, did Jack Black capture his man child essence? I think probably some artistic uh, yeah. liberties there. Yeah, yes. liberties there. But I think the yes. premise was kind of the style there. Yeah. But that's kind of uh, flattering, you yeah. know, to have Jack Black, a kind of yeah. comedic genius, kind yeah. of say, yeah. like, I'm going to be a version of you, dude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it was very loosely based on his his yeah. story. So, yeah. you know, if, with Jack Black, it's going to be funny. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not saying he wasn't funny, but like, you know, it's, it's over the top. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the premise is, Pretty much what he did. Yep. They did good, those kids, man. They did. I'd like to see, where are they now? Yeah. It's just like mm-hmm. 18 years later or something. Yeah. I think know? they had some sort of... They had a reunion. reunion. Mm-hmm. Yes, a couple yeah. years ago. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. But backstage, things were different. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> it is, and School of Rock is a hot, it's a hot franchise. I was looking up here and said, um, let's see, five hot franchises in February of 2013. Yeah, CNN said it was like... Uh, it was good to mm-hmm. get in with. You guys got in at a good time? We yeah. did. We yeah. were franchise number 70 it's when great. we opened Franklin. Now there's 250. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. we feel really Do you guys have a old. big rah-rah rally every year where everybody gets together and compares notes and just... and They do a convention every usually every couple of years, and then there's mm-hmm. a bunch of the owners that meet you know regionally and things like that. So we, mm-hmm. there's a great network yeah. of owners that you know, to get together because you know, no matter what city you live in, you're, you're kind of dealing with the same thing. Right. with the kids and the parents and things like that so kind of get some best practices of, mm-hmm. of ways to do things and we tour every summer we take our house band on a tour and for the last several years we've toured with a school out of Atlanta every year so that's which is awesome mm-hmm. yeah, it's a great great guy and, and great school great kids and so that's so much fun just taking our house band on on tour and we've been all over the country really and uh, yeah, I think we've hit everywhere except for maybe west coast like northeast Texas <laughs> yeah does Sean and Emily realize how cool their parents are no of course not. <laughs> I mean, you guys are rock and roll parents. You started a, a rock music school, and they got the jam th- with thumbs up and full support from you guys. You know? Yeah, we're you still know. mom and dad. Just, yeah, yeah. I think they do know, yeah. like, yeah, but they won't that's, know. Until that's they you know, it's kind of like admitting when you're wrong. It's really hard to admit. I always. <laughs> Remember, there's there's this picture of me and and I'm on stage, guitar playing, and I, you know, send it to Sean and Emily's like, hey, look, you know, I was on stage and we were jamming. And they're like, Dad, you've got your readers hanging down from your. 
<laughs> yeah. Like so rock and roll, you know. Oh, well, they're, they're the first to find something. There's a lot of aging it. rockers now that that, that yeah. have the readers and need the readers. <laughs> well, I tell you what, um, you know, Jim, I just had that my fifth annual uh, Nashville Drummers Weekend. Yes. And, yeah, and Kelly and Angie were nice enough to let me use their facility and it was a great time and they had awesome clinicians and their children were in my house band. Yeah, of And we rocked out, man. We played Kiss, we played Zeppelin, we played ACDC. Mm-hmm. They did a great job. They had fun. They had a lot, they had of, fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Emily's got a groove, man. She, yeah. she's got a groove chick yeah. bass players are cool yeah. man I like she's, a, yeah. she's in this new band out of Belmont and they're, they're really good we've seen them a couple times so, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's cool that she's kind of they've gone from the school of rock and now they're they're both kind of doing music stuff and, they're in the gigging right. world yeah. now they're in the right. real gigging world but they got some probably some pretty cool skills you know to yes you gonna get Spence in the school of rock your drumming son I'm trying to get him He's in the school band right now, yeah. and mm-hmm. we're trying to make sure that he stays because he kind of fought us on that and everything. I was actually going to talk about. Why was that, he being, fighting you on playing the drums in school? I don't I get it. Don't know. Yeah, because he's him. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, it's kids, man. I mean, they're they're finicky. Um, the one thing you guys brought up before was about you know kids and being the cool rock and roll parents. Yeah. How about this for a story? My my kid's first big concert was going to see him and his boss. At, in Charlotte, <clears throat> with yeah. all the uh, you know the backstage accoutrements that come along with it, yeah, like two years ago maybe it was a couple of years ago, yeah. and it was a fun time, good experience, but that's never going to be topped again. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. how how do you become just a regular concert attendee after that? <laughs> well, I like when he said when when he was backstage, he's like, well. Where's backstage? Yes, I, uh, I mean, but people's perception of what goes on back there is like, no, it's, it's like. Dude, the band just walked by for crying out loud. <laughs> right, right, Do you right. not see the buses that are back that's awesome. here? No, he wanted right. to meet Jason. Yeah. That's, that's what he meant. Everybody wants to meet Jason, you yeah. know. <laughs> you made make, it I would have wanted to meet Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you get to meet him every day. <laughs> I, you know, I would have, yeah. Getting back to what you guys talked about before about, you know, uh, part of, I guess, a big life lesson that's also being taught here uh, is doing the stuff you don't want to do. You right. know, like talking to, you know, playing the songs that you're not really into and everything. Mm-hmm. Rich, I mean, not to name the song, but I mean, you got to have songs that you play that you're like, oh, my God. Gosh, put a bullet in my mouth. The ones that come to mind that you play in every wedding band or restaurant band um, are Margaritaville. <laughs> dun, 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 mm. Right? Um, Brown Eyed Girl. Brown Eyed Girl. Yeah. Mm. you're gonna, And you're going to play old time rock and roll. But the thing is, is that I would just, I was always a good student and I just said to myself, you know, if I'm going to play this song, I'm just going to play the best version of it every time I play it because you never know who's in the right, band. You right. never know who's going to be in the audience. Mm-hmm. And even if there's, you know, nobody important important in the audience, the audience is important. You know, mm-hmm. even if it's just, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Smith uh, that are getting yeah. married, you know, it, it, they're paying you good money. They right. want to hear Margaritaville. Right, right. The one thing I noticed that whenever I get in a gig like that or where I'm being hired to do a job, like recently I did that wedding for Angela. Where I was oh, you were an MC, yeah. Yeah. And I had to set up the PA and conduct the wedding and everything. And it was a rough day because it was rain. It was outside. It was a really kind of tumultuous experience. But we got through it. I did the best I could with what I had at the time, put a smile on my face. And wouldn't you know what the father came up to me? He gave me a big hug. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You did an awesome job. You rocked it and everything. You know, I see the opportunity in that because he's influential. I gave him a business card. You never know. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. so that's the other thing to be taught is, you know. Yeah. And a lot of the owners, we all have rules for our house bands and, you know, what, I think a lot of people have asked me in the past, you know, what's your number one thing that you want to accomplish? And a lot of us always say, we just want to, t- we just try and teach the kids, don't be jerks. Yeah. You know, and and I've heard so many people like, you know, in that play music like you do say, you know, nobody wants that person on the bus for 30 days with yeah. them. You know, that guy that- Or 20 they, years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just can't get rid of me. But, you know, and, and we really talk to the kids a lot about that. We talk about, um, you know, respecting the venue, respecting, you know, if we're opening for someone, you're going to be sitting there watching them whether you want to or not. After you play. 
respect the other bands. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a big thing on our tour. You're going to stay and you're going to watch all the schools. Interesting. Has that happened to you? Do you like when you were an opener, Rich? Did you sit and watch the band that you were headline, you were opening for? Um, or yeah. vice versa, do you watch? Yeah, the once openers? you once you get everything off stage and you get everything packed up and back under the right. bay of the bus, you right, know? right. I mean, there's things you got to do before, but like you know, because yeah, you always want to figure out why are these guys headlining, right? You want to steal right. from them and figure out. Right. But does that go out the window once you're a headlining band? Once you're a headlining band, do yeah, does the headlining band go and watch the opening act? Like I always make a point of it at least once during the tour mm -hmm. even if I'm not crazy about the act because um, I have to see everybody backstage or in catering is go out and go to front house and watch the show and take yep. it in you know and, and then I try to you know I'm hard on myself I try to learn everyone's name on the <laughs> tour and it doesn't always work out you know but yeah. I try yeah you know? well you know a lot of it's about trying to teach them how to develop relationships whether it be a business relationship or just you know, a good relationship, whether it be with a venue, you know, everybody wants to have a good relationship with the sound guy. Right. Because they're kind of controlling your performance. But, yeah. you know, we never want to see any of our students being disrespectful to anyone in the venue, you know, not disrespecting the sound guy or, you know, anyone, yeah. not their bandmates, not their instructors. And so there's so many things that we're trying to teach these kids. And, you know, I think it all just rolls into one thing is just don't be a jerk. Love it. Be likable. Right. Be right. easy to work with. Take direction. All mm -hmm. those things that are going to get them through life, whether they go on to play music professionally or not. Right. right. And, and it's a journey. I mean, as long as I've known you, we've talked about your journey yeah. to where you are. And, and, and I mean, I don't think Angie and I ever thought when we opened the School of Rock in 2011 that we would ever, we didn't even think about playing the Ryman or the Preds. I oh. mean, we played the opening of the Spring Hill Library. That was one of the first gigs we had. Nice. And we played down this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but it's a journey, and, and, and that's why I think it's we trying to teach the kids. You know, some of these kids, the, one of their first gigs is they're playing the Ryman. And right, I'm like, no, right. you don't realize it's eight years in the making exactly. for us to get to exactly. that point to be able to, to, to provide that opportunity. And yeah. we truly, mm -hmm. truly respect that and understand that journey that, that we've been on and a lot of these kids have been on. And that's what makes mm -hmm. it all worth it. You, know? you truly have become part of the community and that does not happen overnight. Right. No. Relationships, all the, all the life stuff. It's not about the technical aspect of the music is, is here, but there's just all the, this other aspect of being successful you know that goes yeah. into it you guys have truly used the crash model to, uh, to <laughs> reap the, it's like we've almost when seen that course before <laughs> yeah to, to reap the rewards of, right. uh, and you guys are like yeah you guys are just one some of the best school of rocks you guys are always you're oh, just you. the reputation that you guys have it's like you set the bar really thank high thank you thank you really well nice. you know you said we use the crash model and and i can remember like months even a couple of years after you did your workshop and some of the house band kids you yeah. know we were having some issues and i'm like it, they got so tired of me saying remember what rich redmond said <laughs> <laughs> I, I like you better that. remember what rich like, said, i don't you know? like that rich redmond <laughs> <laughs> they love you rich yeah. oh my gosh yeah. they do it's so nice i i you know i have no children the closest i have to a, ch a child a son is john hall my drum tech mm -hmm. who i've been working with for eight years and so yesterday when i did this cool percussion concert um at uh or as I, uh, Missouri Western mm -hmm. University, in Kansas City. Um, I said, guys, this is a gift from the closest thing I have to his son. John Hole put this Aldine hit medley for me together. It's like 15 minutes of his hits, and I just got, oh, to, nice. got to play him for everybody. So it was really fun. But I, I love the fact that I can go and I could um, try to positively impact kids, and then I send them home to their parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the we, best way. That's best way. <laughs> I'm just like Uncle Rich. What are you curious you, you, about, Jim? You really are Uncle Rich, especially to my kids. Yeah, I need you know. To, and I, speaking of, you know, just getting to the point where you become kind of like a um, uh, a staple in the house. The time with my son when we had the drums in the front of the house, and you sat oh, down yeah. and wanted to play, and he's kind of looked up at his phone. He he had his phone in his hand. He, you were like, "Hey, come on over here, Spencer," and he literally looked up and went right back to his phone. <laughs> and I was. Yeah, that was not a problem. That's when you moment. know your family. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like, that's just Uncle when, Rich. When the kids play the Ryman and they have to go, I mean, the reality of it is it's not always going to be the Ryman right. that they get Correct. to play. Are right. they, they're aware of that. 
Oh yes, yeah, yes. yeah, and they a lot of the kids have we've played outdoors in thirty degree weather, so they you know they understand <laughs> mm-hmm. that there's a lot of gigs. Yeah. Uh, but I think the you know the Ryman was pretty special last oh, yeah. year, just just walking on stage and being backstage in the dressing rooms. It was uh, they were all nervous, even our most experienced, and very, yeah. they were very appreciative. And and the Ryman loved it, so we're, that's why we're back again. Oh this yeah, year, that so. staff mm-hmm. very yeah. super cool. And I, I just played a couple events there, you know, during this yeah. year. Mm-hmm. And whenever I see one of the staff guys, the monitor guys where they're like, hey, didn't you do that thing with the school of rock? That was cool. You've come a long I way said, since then. We're coming back. <laughs> My gosh, where are you just on the school? You were this there last That's year. Awesome. Really quick. You really catapulted yourself up there, didn't you? Now you're you? playing for Jason Aldean. Look at you. How'd that happen? <laughs> Nuts. Well, what's uh, what's coming up for you guys uh, besides the rhyming? What any uh, big goals, big plans? What are the what are some of the shows? I mean, if you look on the the Wikipedia here about all those School of Rock locations that you guys have done, Dream Theater shows you've done. Well, not only oh, that, Dream Theater versus Rush. That's that's interesting. <laughs> and the show that we did was. Um, it was Rush. It was Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Yes. You guys have done soundtrack. Motown shows. Look, it says Rocky Horror, Fleetwood Mac, Radiohead, Clash. Anybody who's anybody, Frank Zappa? Who took on Frank Zappa's music? Wow. I mean, yeah. you really push the kids. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we always want to challenge them, mm-hmm. but yeah. we don't want to overload them. And you do. So yeah. we don't ever give them something that we know that they're just never going to be able to get. So we, we cast these shows and we'll cast them accordingly, um, depending upon what their skill level is, but knowing that we want them to work to get to the next level. So, you know, Zappa show obviously is going to be advanced. So we would definitely, you know, have our advanced kids doing that. We've done some Zappa songs in house band, um, and then, you know, we, for instance, Pink Floyd's The Wall is a show that everybody can play on. There's beginner to advanced. Mm-hmm. There's something for everyone. So that has traditionally been the show, the first show that a school of rock will do when they open. Really? Um, so, yes. And wow. we did it for both of our schools. And that's, you know, kind of what Paul Green back in the day did and all of the new schools Nowadays, it's more of we're either going to do The Wall or The Beatles because The Beatles is another one of those. It's a band that you can do beginner to advanced and Mm -hmm. still, you know, have a pretty big cast and have a lot of kids involved in it. And we're actually doing a Beatles show um, this season at our Nashville school along with some... um, 90s rock mm. and um they're leaning a little bit more towards the heavy metal stuff oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's really i mean in the 90s oh my gosh there's so much you can do there's tons and, of stuff yeah you know who i like dio would be cool to do a dio yeah, show yeah. yeah last in line was uh one of my favorite records i just saw something online dave Grohl was like this is one of the greatest rock and roll records of all time <laughs> you see jim brewer's impression of ronnie james dio <sighs> jim brewer is great it's hilarious i love jim brewer yeah, it's awesome you know <laughs> what i appreciate you oil that thing I know. <laughs> Sounds like an old swing set. WD-40 does. Um, the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack thing. Yes. Was that a School of Rock sanctioned or was that from that's, you? That's us. Yeah, yeah. That was us. That was I us. know why. <laughs> right. What a great earlier conversation. soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, gr- well, a lot of great seventies music in there. It's a Marvel thing. Rich wouldn't understand. <laughs> no, I, I'm more <laughs> a Marvel sorry, guy Rich. than a DC guy, and I, am, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be Spider Man <laughs> when I was a, when I was a young kid. Right. But now, I mean, I'm I'm looking at like an investment of maybe like thirty five hours or something like that to watch all the Marvel movies. Uh, all, what from the recent run, the twenty three, all of them. Oh, from start to right? finish, yeah. yeah. No, Probably. I mean, no, 23 movies. Do you mean the Infinity Saga? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Starting with Iron Man all the way up to Endgame? Yeah, everything. Yeah. Every Marvel movie. I'm looking at like... Just clear your calendar. By Friday, you're, you're there. You I know what I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I think I'm going to get an eye surgery in uh, maybe December, and I'll sit on the couch and rock it. Right. Then you're going to be a mega fan. Yeah. You're going to see right. where I've, I've been coming from all these years. That's right. Right? I, I agree 100%. In fact, we're Marvel maniacs at both schools, so... Um, I mean, we like DC too. I mean, I'm not trying to yeah. like, you know. <laughs> but, it's, it's just not as good. Um, Did you guys see the Joker? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Was it good? I I didn't see it. Well, he's just. I mean, it's DC. Kelly's looking at me really funny because. <laughs> <laughs> 
But is it Oscar? Oh is it Oscar worthy? I did not want to of tell you that it's, he could it's do that, that actor. But the thing is, yes, is that they're putting is. He, RDJ Robert Downey Jr. up against uh, Joaquin Phoenix. I guess they're going to be competing for the same Oscar. Wow! On from him, Oscar uh, from um, RDJ's performance in Endgame mm-hmm. oh. to the Joker. Oh wow! Who's going to win? Mm. That's intense, right there. Joker was I awesome. love me some Robert Downey Jr. He's great, <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> He's great. I need. Well, actually, I used to have a picture of him in the GM office in our Franklin School, but then when we relocated, you know, I've got the picture of Rick Springfield. It was like yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Rick. And then there's Kelly. Kelly's wait, wait, yeah. way down there. Jay, You're on the desk. Jason Momoa. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. But this is just what happens when you, you guys get are together a, for a poster for 20 years. Hey, yes. you know, he had a list Oh, yeah. you, uh, you, you have a list that it, is, is it it's like, like Michelle Pfeiffer, Cindy Crawford, Cheryl Crow. <laughs> Cheryl Crow. He, funny story. You might run into her at the grocery store. We ran into her oh, last week. Yeah. yeah. She was watching Emily's band. Yeah. What? At Rocket Town. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Really? Yep. She, I think she's well, she lives locally. their keys player's aunt, I believe. Yes. So. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's he, cool. She, beforehand, she said, Mom, please make sure he doesn't. Hit on me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll let her do her thing. I, I'll play it cool. Yeah. So he did. It's part In of fact, he said, Hey, that looks like Cheryl Crow over there. And I was like, Did we not tell you? That was- <laughs> wow. So, yeah. But in all fairness, I mean, he'd been laid up with his shoulder and everything. Yeah. So, you know, awesome. he Heavy. wasn't with it that night. <laughs> you, know I, you know what I think is super um, attractive based on not just their essence, but their, you know, I mean, they're obviously good looking, but. Funny women. Leslie Mann. Oh, yeah, she's so great. funny. Judd Apatow's uh-huh. wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Elizabeth Banks, the actress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah she's funny hilarious. women, man. You uh, know? Um, what's her name that played uh, Anna super. in Frozen? Anna Kristen Fair- Bell. Oh, yeah. I love her. And yes. I think she's Anna Ferris awesome. is hilarious, too. Yeah. Oh, oh my yes. God. I like funny women. Yeah, Les- yes. Oh, I know who that is. Leslie Mann. She played, uh, she was the wife in uh, Knocked Up. Also, Paul, this Paul is Rudd's. 40 with Paul Rudd. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. I love Paul Rudd, too. <laughs> Paul Rudd, he's a good looking guy. He's cute. So all, these, cute. all these people I, it's, it's play not, themselves in the movies. Yeah. I just That's love his personality. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a good personality. That's what I want to do, buddy. I just want to play myself. I, you, I know, and you're going to do that. Have you seen that. him doing the um, video remake of You Spin Me? No. Right around. <laughs> it's so awesome. With, it was with Jimmy Fallon, right? Yeah. 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 Jimmy Fallon's always got some fun cockamamie thing for his guests to do. It's not like you're just not going to come on this, sit in this chair and talk about your latest project. You're going to play some ridiculous game Game. with me. We need to do that. Which does separate himself from the masses. He had um, Key from Key and Peele. Yeah. They they had like a, a thing they would press and it would do the style of and then it would have a song so it was like the itsy bitsy spider in the style of dave matthews and, wow. and awesome. they were singing it and they were so both of them were so good and i sent that on. to you didn't i yeah, it was so awesome. funny you need to go everyone look looked that. that up it was so funny it was, so it was awesome. kind of like the lazy singing style yes it is this spot yeah <laughs> you got it is I that think, it? I think Jimmy Fallon did the Dave Matthews one and he was <laughs> spot on. Yeah. It was he was good. so good. Did you see the one with Chad Smith and um, Will oh, Ferrell? Oh, that's oh, awesome. Oh, God. They, they really do look alike. They do. They do. They really do. They really we're, do. Doing, we're doing Fallon at the end of the month. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's always fun. Yeah. It's always fun. Maybe this time I'll actually talk to Questlove because I think I've played the show five times and he's always in the hallway with his Afro pick and I never stop him and say mm-hmm. I mean he knows I'm a drummer if he wanted to talk to me he probably would talk to me because there's drummers on the, there's guest drummers on the show every night you mm-hmm. know but I just he's always so busy running that mm-hmm. band you know so I just mm-hmm. let him do his thing but maybe this next time I'll be like hey Q I think there so, was a School of Rock kid that just did a commercial was on a commercial with, with him Quest. with Quest Love yeah. like, a, like as an actor mm-hmm Cool. I can't you, remember what the commercial was for, though. Well, he was a spokesperson for a while for the Honda Fit. He was like, look it, I can fit my drums that. and the Honda Fit. And, well, yeah, cool. they were playing the drums, so. Yeah. yeah. You could use the pick as a uh, point of rapport. You know? Hey, can there I use that go. for my hair? Or? <laughs> Where did your hair go, bud? What, how did it happen? Parenthood? Uh, genetics. Yeah. You know. I was actually going to say, um, with the business and everything, a lot of businesses always hinge on not only of course the branding and the and and what the business means in the mind of the prospect but ultimately the comes down to the people running 
the business. Now, recently we did a video shoot with you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we recorded a couple of commercials. I mean, out of the interview that we did with Angie, I probably can pull, oh my gosh, probably 12 different spots out of it. Because you're that good. Well, no, because she was she's just <laughs> <No>. very <laughs> she was very good at responding to the questions and providing really good answers and, and speaking from the heart and being authentic. And that's what a lot of people I think should really take note of when they're looking at the schools of rock here in Nashville are the ownership. Um, because whatever you're doing, you guys had told us how long you not only were married, but how long you've been together, which is how long? Thirty two years. Thirty two years. Married twenty six. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't look it okay well, thank you so whatever it is that you're doing it's keeping you really young you guys got great hair right we laugh thank a lot you. we do you laugh we do. a lot we, we laugh fun. a lot at, you're each other's each, best friend at, right at, yeah at each yes. other and uh but we, we we truly enjoy uh you know being together and and all the time and then especially with the school of rock having a very shared vision mm -hmm. um you know angie's better at certain things in the business i'm better at certain things but i think at the end of the day we, we are definitely on the same page mm -hmm. when it comes to what we want out of the business and and really have high expectations of ourselves and mm -hmm. of our instructors and of the kids and we want it to be just just great great experience yeah, you're providing you know, an experience. I mean, we're providing yeah. an experience, and we we understand that the you know the parents are our customers, and we're there to teach music. But we want to you know, when we put on a show, and even if it's a bunch of beginner kids doing Green Day, right. we mm -hmm. want Green Day to rock. Right. You know? Yes. And it doesn't yes. matter. So we, I mean, while we always talk about the Ryman and the Preds games, but you know the the core is these performance shows that we're we're getting ready to do in the next month. And where do you guys do those location wise? Just at the school? Or? Uh, we're doing, I mean, everywhere. Tin Roof. Uh, this uh, we're going to to Kid Rock's place for the oh, first wow. time. Wow! Yeah, it's going to be That's awesome. Be I remember one time you were doing something a Motown show at the Franklin Theater. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We've played there. We play. A few times. We want to give. We want to again. Part of the experience is giving these kids an opportunity to play at all these venues, mm -hmm. and it, and it's a real show, and we're selling tickets, and there's smoke and there's lights and you know it's just the kids on stage and there's transitions and they've got to set up and break down all that just that whole experience yeah. is what it's about that sounds like a lot more fun than say doing school of jazz and we're gonna <laughs> guys we're gonna dress in tuxedos and you're gonna play in the corner of a restaurant really softly are you up for it <laughs> you have to grow a mustache that makes it look like you're tying someone to a railroad track oh my god he really oh, liked no. that joke he's on that again <laughs> That was a, no, that was a great joke. I love Thanks, that buddy. I, I like that. I, I'm going <laughs> to... Hopefully my East Nashville buddies aren't hating on me. Mm. Oh, just let them have it. <laughs> God. I think we're... They deserve it. Like mustaches like you that. said you're playing East at Nashville? the Cambria. Cambria. We're doing a show at the Cambria. Yeah, you are, up, are up on the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. There's a little Drew nightclub. Room. Yeah. yeah we're great. doing Pink Floyd there. You're doing Pink Floyd there? Mm -hmm. Yes. What night? What, uh, uh, it is December 13th. So December 13th is your next show. Mm-hmm. At the Cambria Hotel mm -hmm. on the fifth floor. Yes. What time? Uh, the show starts at 6.30, I believe. And are these free shows for people to get into? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes Absolutely. they sometimes. are. Actually, it sometimes depends. Are. It really depends because sometimes the venues... Yeah, cover your costs. Yeah. Right. Well, sometimes the venues don't want us to sell tickets because... Or we have to go through their actual ticket yeah. um, box office, like with Basement East and some of the other venues that we play with, which is completely understandable. And I'm totally fine with because right. then I don't have to deal with it. But sometimes we're not able to sell tickets because it's just one of those situations where, um, say, like with the Tin Roof, for instance, like the one here people on are Mamba? walking up, yes, yeah. on Broadway, like people are just walking up and down the stairs, you know, and kind of filing in and out. And like, honestly, if it's one of those situations, because I know there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be hearing the kids and be like, who's playing up there? And they're going to come up and they're going to see those kids playing because I think our funk show is going to be at the Tin Roof. Ooh. And um, those kids sound really great, too. And um, they're going to go up and they're going to be like, what? And they're going to stay and they're just, it's just going to be packed. Maybe you guys will be able to do a show over at uh, Aldine's Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. that'd oh, be yeah, great. That'd, that'd be, be great. Because I, be I believe it's one family that owns... A lot of the mm -hmm. FGL, right, Aldean, right, yeah. Luke Bryan. Yeah. Well, and our adult group plays at the Tin Roof a lot. Oh, a lot, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 
yeah so uh it's a lot of fun yeah so the, the, you know that we were a little apprehensive at first about the adults and so i kind of pushed angie to to let me kind of take that over and so we started uh, four or five years ago in, in mm -hmm. nashville because you know there's a lot of adults that have played music but never played in the band yeah. and they've always wanted that's their dream i want to play the adult yeah. show yeah Yes, yes. I want to come jam. Yeah. Are you I, playing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not talking about that kind of adult show. Right? <laughs> ah. so. I think they do kind of need a drummer. Yeah. That'd be fun. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. That'd be, it's a lot of fun. When are you playing? The 22nd? Yeah, we're doing of a December? Christmas show. Yeah. December 22nd? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, let me look in here. Sunday afternoon at the Tin Roof. Sunday afternoon at the Tin Roof. That would be so much fun. Checking my schedule right Nothing now. Nothing like checking calendars. <laughs> oh, yeah, but then, you know, it's but the, I actually don't like the la you know, the last couple of episodes I've had my laptop. I think it's distracting. I'm not crazy about it, but Jim sends me private messages all the time like wrap it up <laughs> <laughs> commercial break um so the 22nd i'm gonna be visiting my parents in florida Aww. and i've been dating kara my girlfriend right. for like well over a year and they she's never met my parents oh so we're just finally meet my parents oh, we, um, we never took a break we got to take a break should we well we got to play the commercial for the school of rock okay. <laughs> oh yeah let's please do that <laughs> okay me too the rich redmond show will be right back Learn by doing, I definitely think, resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms, watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Uh, Jim's question is, is there a school of metal or hip hop in the future? We've done metal shows and hip hop shows, yes. but nice. in you fact, we may do metal just, next season. Yeah. We are doing metal <laughs> in Nashville, aren't we? Maybe, maybe like melodic metal or Cookie Monster metal. <laughs> What's Cookie Monster see. metal? Yeah. What is Cookie Monster? Cookie Monster. Like, no. <laughs> butter your bread with butter. <laughs> I am not crazy about that, guys. I got to tell you, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. no I'm, we, not, I'm not in the screamo stuff. Classic, kinda... more classic metal. Yeah, typically. Yeah. Well, I will just, I will give them, a, I'll, I'll do a live read right now because I just want to tell you guys that I think it's so cool what you're doing in the community. And I'm a product of music education. You know, I came up in Texas where there was an amazing music education culture. So starting in the fifth grade band, mm -hmm. I had that outlet mm -hmm. to learn music and learn from my peers and get those thousands of hours of experience and you guys are providing that for kids and you know playing in a band learning music teaches kids so many things it teaches them uh, leadership how to or how to, how to organize their thoughts how to be responsible time management working in groups and then at the end of the day it's going to improve their self-esteem and if along the way they learn drums bass keyboards guitar they become a better singer it's a great thing right. plus parents you drop your kids off at this place you know they're safe they're going to mm -hmm. be you know doing something really really awesome so if you guys are interested in signing up your kids at the school of rock with my friends angie and kelly then you just gotta email nashville at school of rock.com or franklin at school of rock.com and you won't regret it do it i got two qualifications on that yes okay not only are they going to learn all that stuff they're going to learn about the stuff they don't want to do which is part of life. They, Big part yes, of life. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you could easily come up to that kid that says, oh, I don't really want to play this song. But like, well, I don't really want to play the song called um, Bookkeeping, okay? <laughs> you know, or, or Receipt Reconciliation. I don't want to play that song either, but I have either. to. Um, and the other thing, parents, is that Wild Ginger is right around the corner. That's right. Just drop them off, Wild Ginger. That's yes. Right. I remember my first annual drummers weekend. We took, cool I took like yeah. fifty drummers oh, wow. to Wild Ginger. Oh my god! That was a big bill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, rich. I think I finally locked in my business model, which was like, hey guys, uh, I bring in my buddy Sarah Cardiel, Sarah the Real Deal Cardiel, <laughs> and I bring her mom in, mm -hmm. and she's pretty good at getting subs and burritos and stretching a dollar. Mm -hmm. She's good. She's hired. Parenting. Yeah. 
total parenting. Yes, definitely. Well, is there any parting thoughts you guys want to leave the world with about School of Rock and the future developments? We got a show on December 12th and a show on December 22nd. Well, there's there's right? a show on December 13th. December 13th? Yes. And December 22nd. And we also have December 14th and December 15th. Oh, so my we'll God. All weekend. Is this all on the website? It's Yes. Yep. It's okay. all weekend long. Um, we we kind of used to stretch the shows across different weekends, but it kind of got difficult because we would be starting our new performance seasons. And so some kids were just kind of hanging around, not doing anything. And so we... We found that it actually works a lot better if we just do a whole weekend and it's kind of like a big extravaganza thing. And yeah. so my um, GM and Franklin's been calling it the Broadway invasion of School of Rock so, because all of the um, venues are on Broadway. And hmm. so um, we're really excited about that. And then we'll all take off a little bit for the holidays um, after the adult show on the 22nd and come back and do the rhyming. We're going to do the rhyming. Yes. Do any of the kids respond to the Broadway stuff that's <laughs> happening? I mean, my daughter has really gotten into a lot of um, like these new plays that are coming up. Mm -hmm. um, um, what What's the Dear song? Evan Hansen. Dear Evan wanna, Hansen. That's a big uh, one. Huge one. Yeah. That was the one you transcribed and played. Yeah. That song. We have, we have kids that are really into the musical theater thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'd say our, you know, we talked about this a little bit when you guys were at the Franklin School, like our major competitors are sports, musical theater, forensics team. Um, <laughs> forensics team, really? It's like debate, kind okay, of. Okay, okay. It's not like, I used to be obsessed with forensics, like the CSI kind of yeah. stuff, so that's different. Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, why didn't they have that when I was in school? But <laughs> it's more like debate team. Uh, so, you know, those those are the things that, that we really compete for students' time uh, with. But yeah, we do have a lot of kids, usually the younger ones that, that are really into the musical theater. And, you know, that's, those are the songs they want to learn in their lessons. And so we're like, okay, cool. So I hear Frozen song, theme song, yeah. quite a bit. Oh, really? Let, it go. Let, Let it, it go, go. Let it go, Rich. Let it go. <laughs> Christopher Walken singing Let It Go. Yeah. <laughs> Let it go. Um, what was the other thing I was going to ask was... Um, you haven't taken your ginkgo balboa. Okay. You're not I remembering haven't. anything. I I'm underslept right now, I got to tell you, but I'm having a great time. Yeah, that's good. Glad yeah. you're having fun. Yeah, totally. Did you enjoy the show, Rich? Our show? <laughs> yeah. What totally. did you like? I learned that it's so easy to sign up your kids at the School of Rock. You just got to email Nashville at schoolofrock.com or Franklin at schoolofrock.com and the kids are going to come out at the other end better human beings and they're going to have musical skills that will last a lifetime. And uh, there's a lot of performances on the books in December and January 5th. We'll see you at the Ryman Auditorium. I learned that they're very big on learn by doing, mm -hmm. which yes. is, or performing, yes. which is uh, huge. This is actually what I did when I came up in radio. It's how I learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, kids have a uh, a fear of driving. <laughs> not <laughs> all not kids. That. This is such a new... Some that's kids. so strange. It really I is. mean, I have like a 17-year-old. I'm like, are you still not driving? And they're like, yeah, you know, it's just not on my list of things that are a priority. So. <laughs> I have you. I have Uber. <laughs> right. Yeah. I right. get in yeah, cars with strangers now. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> It is a bizarre thing that we're living in a it's world crazy. where you can order a car on your phone, some stranger pulls up, and you trust each other in your lives. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, we, we trust a lot of people with our lives oh, on like a daily pilots. basis. Yes. I always think to myself, what if that pilot was just out just raging, partying drunk a couple <laughs> oh, hours <Lord>. ago? <laughs> They're not supposed to drink, because I got a lot of pilots in my family. They're not supposed to drink um, right. eight hours before yep. the flight. Yep. Let me tell you, yeah. well, that's being in the, when I was in the car business, taking people on test drives. Yeah. No way. People that's would show risky. up drunk? No, you'd get oh. people that, well, let me take it on the highway. And then before you know it, you're doing 120 miles an hour. Oh. Like the stranger. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't like that. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -mm. It happened probably once a month. I mean, can't you just say, hey, you don't need to go 120? You didn't know that. Until they press you the know. accelerator. <laughs> yeah. You know, because yeah, part of my, my, my route was take, I want to take them on the highway so right. they can, mm -hmm. you know, get the feel and everything. Mm -hmm. But some of them went, yeah, let's see what this thing does. It's a buck 20. And I was like, no, what are you doing? Mm. You know, so yeah. that was fun. But we, yeah. so that's what you learned. Um, well, yeah, fear of driving in that sense. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, you know, trusting people. <laughs> you know, you never know who you're getting in, in your car with. 
So. Well, hey, maybe I'll play on the next adult show. Oh, That'd you're be booked. awesome. You're booked. Man, I have the same so imagery fun. that comes to mind when That's you say crazy. that. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, are you make the community proud. You, you are a part Thank of this community. You. You've worked so hard at it. You've cranked out some really great musicians, including your own children, Sean and Emily. Look for Sean and Emily McCray. They're out there in the community bringing their rock and roll dreams to life. <laughs> and uh, Jim, as always, a fantastic time, man. Thanks for everything you bring to the table here, man. Behind the scenes... This would never happen without you, man. You're welcome. Yeah, and if it, <laughs> if you guys have uh, suggestions for guests, I have an email address for you, the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for subscribing, sharing, rating, and reviewing. We really appreciate it. Come back for the good stuff. We'll see you next time on another episode of the Rich Redmond Show. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.